Ukulele is a PC Steam video game featuring the signature style of rare back and flashing period dots of action, bullet zoning into a creative masterpiece. Before the clinically haters of this game go into a wrinkle, smoother template of crying like a DK buffoon, let's get something edgy straight. My top 5 favorite worlds are number 5, Moody Maze Marsh, number 4, Tribal Stack Tropics, number 3, Glitter Glaze Glacier, 2, Galleon Galaxy, and number 1, Capital Cashino. Why? Because it reminds me of Donkey Kong Country 2, Rule 4, Crazy Kremlin in a lot of ways. And fun fact, the boss battle of the Crazy Kremlin is a big bumblebee. So I kind of see what Platonic was going for, as the final boss is capital B, and he also fires boosting thornets at you in the last part of the final battle. Now hatred minimized, encapsulated, riot, angry hordes of ukulele haters, or someone that is generally waiting to play this, but has no obsolete idea what they are going for. If you don't like some frustrating parts in video games that require a challenge to get all the collectibles, then this game is not for you. This game takes a lot of ready mode patience. So to get that out of the way, this game is potentially jumping platformer with Banjo Kazooie and Tui's name all exclusively written on it. With all the dialogue, tone, elevating voices, enhancing music, and sound effects by David Wise and Grant Kirkhope and the other guy named Steve Burke that does the retro coded feel sounds, the game is cinematic celebrations of Ruby pomegranates of munching into classic humor or toilet barf crowded laughter. I love the character design. A long-standing missionary lizard or gecko and a sarcastic flapping wing bolded purple sharp eyed tilted bat that gives a mega chance of living like Banjo and Kazooie. I won't spoil the storyline or the apologetically cutscenes or jarring spoilers that drag into secret chambers of the gamer must find out by themselves to experience the Rolf Dipping Champion, the talkative carpet energetic bat giving their all to a satisfying probed adventure with a bee stinging twist. Collect artistic competition collectibles such as butterfly extenders or an extra heart jointed point for your life meter, or something else that is quite rejoiceful. Too many pages to double mount count. You find out in rules such as tribal stack Tropics, a jungle vocal visible way of bringing the Mayhem Temple from banjo Tui mixed in with a instant absorption valley air with channeling Aztec imaginations. Second world is a barrier breaking ice form with a Disneyland snow peak crystallized effort of saluting a bigger theme sensation of banjo Kazooie's Freezy Peak. Also a cool little intense hydration dungeon that is both chemically balanced into a creative puzzle designing choice. You unlock this partway structure when you expand the Hungry Licking Book to greater graf spirits and the world changes into bigger familiarity areas that you couldn't explore without the treacherous option. Third World is not my favorite at all. Something are just bland and set out to be burned into recoiling roasted flames and the only thing that ticks in a tingly manner of being my favorite is the boss battle. No spoilers, but it's something really cultured into collaboration of a squid that meets a murky swamp water rising up as a creative fringe point to a defined measure. But you have to be derailed honest. Not everybody's going to like a world or a level that most people love or yield in a manner of height signs. Fourth world. Oh, my undulating, swirling, creative, artistic, fun, flat out best level and world that Platonic and AKA Rare has ever created. I literally stopped and explored every air defying cranny, and wow, the details are semi transparent to be amazing into a godly way. I would literally live in this world and just transport my lonely memorial life here. Everything is conveying sculpture of fantastic relaxation, and it goes good until you get to the shafted minecart minigame that we will talk about now. See, there's this bubble glowing, hopping, glitter, smashing, difficult, out of control, nowhere to go, but fall off immediately. I'm dead triggering serious. This is the part where I can say I didn't enjoy this at all. Until you get to the Galleon Galaxy minecart minigame, it's actually really fun. 
and a single breath takes me away. Why, this is a fun minecart game, but the rest of the minigame collection is horrendous, and I'm united to say that I sadly would skip those in general. That's the only bad gripe this game has. Nothing else takes away the strikingly poignant level design and the worlds are just glorious and dynamic portrayal, die rain effort. The last world is a space planet tome of a Super Mario Galaxy spinoff, trying to evaporate the last calling, and the grand scope of the world is huge. But I've seen it before in other games, but there's a lot of fun bell ding, skipping animations, and fun little side quests to make this my favorite second world. I won't go into propeller-wise line details about it, but it's another world I can say Rare, aka Platonic Games, did an outstanding job. The music, no words, can express the boundaries of legends making greatness as I tap my dancing feet to the joyful melodies and jazzy electric guitar, dubstep wobble sounds like Grant and David Wise can overpass a noteworthy game like this has. Listen to the well candlelight lit soundtrack. It will burn you up and spit you out as Grant spanks your chapping butt cheeks as mumble jumble glitters your face with a stick of musical knowledge. Thank you, Grant and David Wise, once again. Such an underrated masterclass. You also have Rex, which is a friendly neighborhood dino arcade hipster, giving you entertaining renewed little gemstone classic minigames that are actually really fun. And I don't see why people would beg a training thought of saying this is the worst part of ukulele. I definitely disagree with that. Really a stone pole and warrior of a pleasant feature indeed. You also have floor length gum tonics that spice it up with more replay value to glisten up the overall experience. I can say so much and we'd be here for over one hour and study capping seconds. But I really enjoyed this digital magical masterpiece that really takes you back to your earlier childhood popping in Banjo Kazooie, Donkey Kong 64, Conker's Bad Fur Day, and Banjo Tooie to earn that ultimate rewarding experience throughout this classic driven optimistic game that is generally for you if you like ascending platformers. I give this game a 10 slash 10. Argue all you want. It was the most fun I ever laid my illuminating eyes on while trapping myself in a triangle layer room, seeing plus up high five hands, just giving this a thumbs up in cradling boxes. I hope you buy this game and have fun with it. Thank you, Playtonic Games, Grant Kirkcope, David Wise, and that other guy named Steve. Like I have. Love the Burrito Master.